if I want to come back to this system with this matrix 1, 2, 2, 4, which you decided in the first phase today was a projection, I'm interested to know, is this matrix 1 to 1 and is this matrix on to? And what group A is telling us is that a matrix represents a 1 to 1 linear transformation when it has no free variables. Because when it has no free variables, what do we know about its solutions, of its linear systems? How many solutions do its linear systems have? One. The solutions, when they exist, are always unique. So there could be no solution. But when there is a solution, there is only one solution. So no free variables. And there are no free variables precisely when every column has a pivot. So that's how a matrix for a linear transformation can tell you whether the transformation was one-to-one. -one. Just do the row reduction and find out if it has a pivot in every column. For this matrix, one, two, two, four, what is its row echelon form? I don't agree with that. So take row two and subtract twice row one from this matrix. Even the reduced row echelon form is not the identity matrix here. Because as soon as I subtract twice the first row from the second row, what happens? I wipe out my second row. Because in addition to the columns being multiples of one another, here the rows are also multiples of one another. By the way, that always happens in two-by-two two matrices. We can't have the rows be multiples of each other without having the columns be multiples of each other, and vice versa. But the point is, how many pivots does this matrix have? One. Only one. And so we have, in particular, a free variable. y, for instance, if we called the, the variables here x and y. y would be a free variable. Which means that we could choose its value arbitrarily, and so when this system is consistent, and the system is only consistent if our right-hand side happens to have a 0 over here. But when it does, and our equation is therefore consistent, the solution is not unique. So is this transformation 1 to 1? No. Another way to understand that is just to remember that we saw before you went into this activity here that there were at least two different values of x over here in the domain that had the same image in the codomain. And that is the very definition of not being one-to-one, -one, okay? whether we're talking about a linear transformation or a set theoretic function or anything. It's not one-to-one -one if two different points in the domain have the same image in the range, in the codomain. So this is not a one-to-one -one transformation. Thank you, group A. Uh, what about onto? How do you tell, based on the matrix of a linear transformation, whether the transformation was onto? Pivot in each row. There's a pivot in every row. And, and why is that? Right. Exactly. If we want this to always, always be a consistent system, then we need to make sure that if the left-hand side becomes 0, that the right-hand side is still 0. In other words, that's how we have to maintain consistency. The problem with that being that that depends not just on the matrix A, but it also depends on the right-hand side, the vector B. And if it's ever possible for me to get something not 0 over here, then I'm going to get an inconsistent system. So the way to make a linear transformation onto is to guarantee that this can never happen and the way to guarantee that this can never happen is to have a pivot in every row. Because if I have a pivot in every row, that means that I have a bound variable in every row. We need to have, uh, have a bound variable in every equation. Maybe that's another way to say it. In every equation. And so every row has to have a pivot. So looking at our linear transformation here, our matrix 1, 2, 2, 4, is it onto? No. Because in order to be onto, we would have needed a pivot in this third row. Looking at it from a transformation perspective, it's not onto because we can make an inconsistent system by choosing a B which doesn't belong to the column space. This B, for instance, has no x for which ax is equal to b. And that's the definition, even in set theory, of not being onto. 
that there exist things over here in the codomain, vectors like this b, which are not the image of some vector from the domain. So this is definitely not on two. So here's where I would like to lead us into the material of tomorrow. What is it going to take in order for a matrix A to be both? Remember from your proof and logic class that having a function which is both one-to-one -one and onto is like the best of all possible worlds. Because when a function is both one-to-one -one and onto, what can we do with it? We can find an inverse. Only functions which are both one-to-one -one and onto have inverse functions associated with them. And if we have an inverse function, we can go both from domain to codomain and from codomain back to domain equally easily. So we can just undo whatever the function does. So looking at what you've written up here for today, what has to be true about a matrix A in order that that happens? If A is both one-to-one -one and onto, then what? It has to be square. Aha, uh -huh. why does it have to be a square matrix? It has to be uh, uh, no free variables. Okay, so there's no free variables, which means that we need to have a pivot in every column. No free variables guarantees one-to-one, -one, and therefore uh, every column has a pivot. And also, what else? Um, yes, that's what we get actually when we guarantee no free variables. We get that uniqueness. What about the other side of the puzzle? Your group side of the puzzle. We also need every equation to have a bound variable. In other words, we need this to be onto. So we need every row to have a pivot. Again, you're 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 thinking you're thinking square still. We're working towards square. Okay. So if every row and every column have a pivot, that must mean two things. First of all, as Zach says, that requires a to be square, because remember we can have at most one pivot in every row and every column. So if every row has one and every column has one, in other words, if there's no row or column left out in the cold, we have to have the same number of rows as we have columns. So first we must have A be a square matrix. It cannot be taller than it is wide, and it cannot be wider than it is tall. And the second thing we know about it is what must its reduced row echelon form look like? If every column has a pivot, and every row has a pivot, and in the reduced row echelon form, every pivot is by itself in its row and its column, and what does that reduced row echelon form look like? The identity, the identity matrix. Dot, 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 zero, zero, one. Exactly. So that implies that when we row reduce A, we get the identity matrix. And when I said that we're thinking about invertibility, which is the next topic that's coming up on, uh, well, it's 2.3, and we're doing a little today and a little tomorrow. This is the first set of criteria for a linear transformation to be invertible. Its matrix must be square, so its domain and its codomain have to be the same dimension. And it has to row reduce to the identity matrix. Because in order to be one to one, it has to have a pivot in every column. And in order to be onto, it has to have a pivot in every row. And the only way that can happen is if it row reduces to the identity matrix.